The nation of Honduras sits in the center of the Americas. It is a land of beaches and rainforests, of mountains and cities with a vibrant culture that dates back to the Mayans. But though this nation is rich with beauty and resources, there are millions of Honduran children who suffer poverty, sickness, and want. This is a look into their world. According to the World Bank, Honduras has one of the highest poverty rates and inequalities in the Western Hemisphere. Its population has a per capita income of $1,170 per year. 68% of the population is poor, and 42% live in extreme poverty. While the birth rate in Honduras has been decreasing since the 1970s, it still remains high in comparison to both other developing nations and to other Latin American and Caribbean nations. I mean, the history of the Honduran economy is, is very interesting because it was the banana republic. Uh, it was dominated by United Fruit Company in the 30s. And uh, eventually the United Fruit Company literally uh, wiped out all of its competition. By the time we get to the end of World War II, we, we, we begin to see a change and they begin to elect more progressive politicians. And land reform began. That, I think, was uh, the golden years of, of Honduras uh, until we get into the 1970s and things begin to change. This is where you could argue capital begins to strike back. Increasing pressure began to be put on Honduras to open up its economy. Uh, trade union leaders were arrested and uh, were, were harassed. The peasants basically began to be shoved aside. They began to move to the cities in search of work, and uh, they began to send uh, their children uh, out to earn a living. Almost 15% of Honduran children work, and of these, two-thirds are not in school. The average salary of street children is only $60 a month. ¿De dónde agarran comida? En la caja. ¿De las cajas? ¿Cajas de dónde? ¿Y a cuánto? A 10 pesos. ¿Vas a la escuela? ¿Por qué no vas a la escuela? ¿No te dejan ir? No. ¿Quieres ir a la escuela? Yo no tengo bolsón. The government of Honduras is failing in many ways. As a juridical organism, we feel impotent. We have tried to get many of the children who live in the streets out of that situation by bringing them to the Honduras Institute of the Child and Family. But in many cases, these children soon escape back to the streets. Many of these children cannot live without drugs, and when we look for help to detoxify them, we had no support from the government. The places that have all the medical equipment necessary usually require a substantial financial remittance, and as we know, these kids have no income and no legal representation. <laughs> Glue is one of the most common drugs used in Honduras. Uh, it is a um, very cheap drug. I spoke to one young man and he told me that he consumes glue because he, he wants to forget that he's hungry. It numbs the appetite so they can go longer without eating. 
uh, and it numbs them to the experience of sleeping on the street and being subject to, uh, to beatings and robbing uh, because they are attempting to earn money. According to the Intra-American Development Bank, 20,000 children in the streets of Honduras are at high social risk. 60% of these children suffer from depression, and 6 of every 100 commit suicide every year. It's, in some sense, it's an outrageous irony that uh, our policies, which are described as uh, being uh, those meant to promote economic development in uh, third world countries, uh, have produced just the opposite result. Honduras is the second poorest country in Latin America next to Haiti. There are four important areas of children's rights. The first one is survival which includes children under age five who have the right of having access to vaccination, nourishment, and health care. The second area is that of protection, which includes all children at social risk and are very vulnerable to being abused and trafficked. The third area is that of development, which involves the application of technology, knowledge, and science to allow a child to grow intellectually and be part of a globalized world. The last area is that of participation, where the government gives every child the right to participate in every decision made and with that, the ability to reason so they will mature into citizens who will assume future responsibilities. In 1959, the General Assembly of the United Nations approved the Declaration of the Rights of the Child. The rights of the child include the right to an education, right to a family, right to the proper health treatment, right not to be obligated to work, right to be heard, right to have a name, right to be fed each day, right to association, right to integrate and be part of the society they live in, right not to be discriminated against, and the right not to be mistreated. I had the honor to be the president of one of the most important commissions created in the history of Parliament, the Commission of Rights of the Child and Adolescent. It was during this period that the President of Congress made a compromise with the country because Honduras was a signatory of the Convention of the Universal Rights of the Child. It was a great honor for us to begin the work in the different areas to initiate the validation of this act, which would be the Law of the Rights of the Child and Adolescents of Honduras. We were able to work with many institutions like UNICEF to form a law that was presented in Congress and eventually approved. UNICEF usually works with the government, and it does not directly provide services to NGOs or act like one. While NGOs do work directly with people, in this case children of the streets, what UNICEF does is support either the government or NGOs in helping with the prevention and strengthening of families. One area of hope is nonprofits and non-governmental organizations. Volunteers and funding come from around the world to help the children of Honduras. It's really satisfying to know that I'm making a big difference in these kids' lives, that I've taught, I'm teaching them how to read, I'm teaching them how to do math, that they know all this because of me. So it's, it's, it's been a great experience, and it's been difficult, and there's been trying times, but it's, this experience has definitely made me stronger. I think I'll be connected to Honduras forever. I think that maybe this will be my second home, and I'll want to come back. Education is key to improving the situation, both educating children in Honduras and educating international viewers like you about their plight. Until their story is heard, the children of Honduras will continue to face an uncertain future. No, no, no.